was her. We were walking towards the isolation wards when a nurse stormed out of one of the four isolation wards. She immediately stopped in front of the CEO and the Deputy Director Curative Health Services, Mr. Tony Basse. Dressed in her full COVID-19 PPE, she asked them for an oxygen concentrator. A small chat and she hastily walked off. She rushed back a few minutes later. Someone then bring it down quickly. You were not bringing the concentrator? It was clear, evident on her face, her patient wasn't the only one in distress. It has become a burden to many staff, knowing they can help the patients but lack the apparatus. All of them are on oxygen supplies, but um, we need to get them all on their, according to their requirements for each, each patient. So, so at the moment we're sharing things at the moment, doing double, um, um, wide connections, meaning on, a, on, on one cylinder, we try to get two people hooked up on that with the two wings, just making, ensuring that at least we have oxygen for these patients. But uh, we're hoping that with um, increased numbers of uh, accessories, then we can get one patient on, on, on an oxygen tank by itself. That's the apparatus that we require to attach to the oxygen cylinder. You can have the cylinder, but if we don't have this, then the cylinder is useless. Yeah. Sister Lynette Baba is the sister in charge of the COVID-19 wards. She has worked non-stop since the surge. Uh, we have a team of a nursing officer and a medical officer with the HOs from Mosby in here. We are grateful. But if we could have more of our registrars on the ground would be very helpful to Dr. Bigam at the moment. In another isolation room, we are told four children below the age of five are admitted. We were not allowed into any of the isolation ward nor the emergency ward. Dr. Appa said the patients are in so much distress, a group of journalists trying to take pictures simply wasn't a good idea. But they allowed us to observe. A peek into one of the isolation rooms saw men and women on oxygen struggling to breathe trying to find a comfortable position to allow air to flow easily through their respiratory system. Relatives gather around taking turns to aid the ailing loved one. With the hospital struggling with manpower, staff rely heavily on relatives to assist with palliative care. From statistics provided, majority of the patients are between 30 to 50 years old. At the moment, we, I mean, in, in this facility, it's a 40 bed. Uh, facility. Um, uh, we have, you know, on any day we would have a bit more than 40. Uh, uh, some sitting, some waiting. We do make makeshift beds just to accommodate them and get them on some form of oxygen to at least um, buy time for them uh, oh, and hope that they, they recover. According to the CEO, in just a month of September, over 400 COVID-19 patients have been received at the hospital with 26 deaths as of the 5th of October. But that figure is only for the ones in the hospital. The morgue is receiving bodies from all over the province. Those who have died of COVID-19 are put in body bags and placed in two chillers outside the morgue. Relatives are not allowed near the morgue nor touch the dead bodies. They only leave the casket and watch from afar as their loved one is placed in the coffin. That responsibility has been given to the undertakers, young men engaged by the hospital to help the morgman David Awo. Awo, who has worked at the morgue for over 20 years, says he hasn't seen something like this before. I am in I'm in sick number two years. This is a star or kind of something. Them. Plenty of bodies are coming. But now, I'm in the one and a half months of the slayer. I'm in the group. Eastern Highlands Province is experiencing an unprecedented number of COVID 19 cases and deaths, with community transmissions largely to be blamed. With COVID 19 funds exhausted, the hospital is struggling. A number of our partners have given us a lot of uh, help, assistance. Mm. So, we have been using that. Uh, with all the things that we procured and done and all that, uh, it's all uh, 
finished and then uh, we are now going to the using the hospital or a PHA budget to take care of the boat facilities. Otherwise our resources are still depleted every time and we are overstretched to pull in the current. We still need support from outside. Yeah. Our PPs are running out every day and so our priority now is to protect our workforce. Uh, so we have to have constant supplies of PPE at the center every day. Port Moresby General Hospital is also experiencing the same crisis. Initially from 27 September to 28, 29, the positivity rate was uh, 31%. It's only increased to 40% and 50%, meaning that uh, five cases of uh, Five out of every ten cases presenting with a flu-like cough fever are tested positive for COVID. The National Ambulance Service of PNG St. John Ambulance reports that in the last 48 hours, it responded to 133 emergencies, 48 of which were for COVID. St. John is also managing the Port Mosby Isolation Ward at Taurama Aquatic Center. Seven in every ten patients is going to Palm Gen is has been um, positive, so it's an alarming rise. And um, I'm not sure if we are gonna cater for that here with the rate that, at the rate that we are going. So yeah, it's pretty scary. Uh, currently we've got um, 150 beds. Similar stories out from hospitals throughout the country as the number of cases continue to rise. Uh, so far we have Total cases of more than 600 are confirmed uh, by way of RDT testing or gene expert. 39 uh, members of our health workforce, inclusive of support services, have been infected. From the recent statistics released by the National Control Center for COVID-19, as of the 5th of October, a total of 21,640 confirmed cases were reported with 237 deaths throughout the country. Provinces with cases over 1,000 are NCD, Western Highlands, Western Province, Morobe, East New Britain and Eastern Highlands Province. Provinces recording the highest number of Delta variant are West Sipik, NCD, Western Central, Morobe and Medang. Provinces with the most deaths since the third wave are NCD, Eastern Highlands, Western Highlands, Western Province and Jiwaka. Total recovered cases are 18,838. These figures are five days old and unofficial reports from hospitals say the death toll has increased including the number of new cases. While Eastern Highlands Provincial COVID-19 Committee has imposed a two-week lockdown to control the transmission, many provinces encouraging new normal protocols and advising the people to get the vaccines. New COVID-19 measures from the National Controller bans gathering of more than 20 people. The recent surge of cases has seen a number of people turning up to get the vaccines. Vaccination coverage so far has seen NCD reaching 50%, while the rest of the country is below target. <laughs> Protecting me against